Welcome to the Under the Hood Podcast, Unplugged. All right, here we are for Under the Hood Unplugged, Tony. <laughs> Very relaxed, Very sitting relaxed. back in a nice leather chair with a cigar and a mm. whiskey. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how this goes, depending how uh, far in we get into said cigar and whiskey. Or said topic. <laughs> mm, true that. But speaking of the topic, we just spitballed a few ideas of what we wanted to discuss. And I mm. think um, one of these ones we agreed is a really... Um, good one, which is how to add value back into your digital marketing. Yes. Um, and it seems to have lost value, don't you think? I mean, yeah. digital, especially the barrier to entry now mm. for marketing um, mm. has dropped, right? Because anybody and everyone can do it. You can grab a bit of AI, chat GPT, can write stuff for you. Mm. You know, there's uh, image creators, there's everything. So have we lost the value in digital? Yeah. Have we made it too easy for every person and his dog to to generate. <laughs> I haven't tried my dog yet, but that's a good idea. <laughs> well, someday. It's probably not out of the question. No. <laughs> we joke now. I know you're training Finn to do all the AI. I've seen you on the calls there. Yeah, so no, he's baby. good. For yeah, five he's months good. old, he's, he's really progressed. <laughs> he knows how to use ChatGPT. Oh, already, yeah. He's not even talking and he's just getting ChatGPT to do it for him. Hi, ChatGPT. Change my nappy. <laughs> <laughs> not too long. Not too far off, I'm sure, Tony. No. We joke now, but oh my gosh. No, that's right. Who knows? Who knows? But th- that brings up the... Uh, thought that I had around that because I was listening to a lot of other marketers talk about this subject is that, well, if everyone is in this low bar entry uh, place to shout as loud as they want with Mm. whatever they want, with all the tools available to them, does that one sort of decrease the value in the space because everyone's using it? Does it not feel exclusive anymore? Mm. And two, like it drives up the cost like crazy to stand out, yeah. you know, within that space. So should we then be considering ways of standing out by almost going backwards into less popular ways mm. of marketing? What, so what's your of, thoughts to that? Bit of analog sort mm. of coming in. Mm. Um, yeah, it kind of reminds me, I think... I think I was watching some a movie, like I think it could have been The Incredibles or something, and they said, if everybody has a superpower, nobody has a superpower. Mm. It's kind of like that, right? Because yeah. uh, you're kind of giving everybody the access to the tools. But I agree with you. I think it's a good thing to think about. How can we you know, go back to basics, bring some of the you know, analog or the, the pre-digital mm. kind of elements into it? You mm. know, I think that's, that's worth thinking about, as well as how do we increase the value of digital by spending a little bit more? Because, mm. you know what I mean, straight strategy, good thinking, you know, mm. getting the design team involved, um, mm. brainstorming with your, the, the rest of your crowd mm. and coming up with things that, you know, AI wouldn't think about will give you that edge, I think, maybe. Is that investment in strategy, I think you, you nailed that particular point, um, that will, I think, eventuate to that way of standing out mm. um, purely because I think in, in a lot of marketing words people put out there these days it's cons- it's trying to appease the platforms more than the end user than anything these yeah. days i find i don't know if you see that but you see like for example youtube videos where they have the same kind of thumbnails that attract the same kind of viewers because that's what the algorithm likes not yeah. necessarily what the end user yeah. likes they're getting too clever mm. for themselves in terms of that yeah i think you're right and you you miss the end user you know that you're aiming it at like what, mm. what's relevant to them you mm. know what what is going to get them engaged not mm. how's it going to get shown to them mm. based on the algorithms of the platform and i worry a bit too for the next generation of marketers because they might rely on these like sin <laughs> true <laughs> well they rely too much on these kinds of tools to do the work for them and i think they lose sight of their own ability or they kind of don't they don't challenge themselves enough. Like if you look at like Mad Men, for example, mm. um, you know, and probably not the best example of, you know, people working within, you know, a healthy work environment. But yeah. to be fair, what they were trying to do at that time that was representative in that show was they were trying to crack the the person, the individual, the person that they were targeting, you know, with the marketing efforts they were doing, mm. you know, and that was the whole bit of it. And it was all analog, like to yeah. your point. It was yeah. them just going, I need to research this client, research their user and really nut, nut out what it is that's going to be effective. And then what came out of that marketing effort was a lot of the time just one line. Yeah. It was like, you know, McDonald's, I'm loving it, you know, or it was, um, you know, got milk, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like there was all <laughs> these, can you think all those amazing marketing, do you ever see anything that clever these days? No. Like it's very rare, I find. Yeah, it's, it's becoming a sea of sameness, I think, out there. Mm. But going back to you, I was just thinking about your, your kind of analog adding to digital. So 
Here's a thought. So what if you had your digital kind of CTA that mm. you know put someone filled in a landing page, but instead of it taking them to a boring ebook mm. download that they never read because it's still in the digital format, you post it out to them. Mm. A physical copy that goes out to their address. Like how many times do you receive stuff like that in the mail anymore? Mm. You know? Except junk mail that still exists, but an actual valuable piece packaged up that gets posted out to you. It's only going to add like another, you know, few dollars to the whole uh, experience, but it's really going to be a lot more effective, I think. So that's mm. kind of one example. Yeah, and when you think about like a lot of spend that goes into something like Google or Facebook, you know, that you're paying them to show your ads, and you think on the return on investment on that, like we've talked about in many previous episodes, it's often like not that worth it at the end of the day for a lot of like time spent and energy and costs. So why not then convert that to your point to something like that where it's more analog, more direct mail because you know, the cost is probably not that dissimilar to be honest. If not, it might be cheaper. But you know, the other thing as well, and I I always used to talk about this, you know, um, when I first started in marketing is that, you know, you've got to try and attract the five senses. Mm -hmm. Now you think digital, you know, you could put a video up, right? So you've got visual and you've got sound. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm. Right, but you send them then a book in the mail. You've got touch. You've got mm, the, the, the smell of the fresh print coming out. Mm. You know what I mean? There's there's all these extra. You could you could put a little, you know, packet of biscuits with it or a chocolate with it as well. So then you have got taste. Mm. So now all of a sudden you've now got the five senses of that particular prospect or customer mm. rather than two. Mm. So it's got to be more. It's got to be more engaging. It's got to you know bring people in closer. Yeah, I I agree. I like that the five senses. I think. Yeah, similarly, when I was studying, um, there was a lot of notes about how you could capture people not just on as well like a physical level, but a psychological Mm. subliminal level as well. And something about like, you know, I've seen this done before where someone will post you something and it'll sit on your shelf in your house, whatever it might be, might be a little statue, it might be a ball, I don't know, whatever Mm. it might be, but you see it around and it constantly reminds you, oh, that was, you know, for example, HubSpot's you know, bouncy ball that they sent me, you know, and, but, you know, even though that isn't necessarily, you know, effective or measurable um, in, you know, a digital sense, yeah, it, it does allow for that subliminal, like reoccurring, um, yeah. you know, uh, referral point to that. Oh yeah, that's HubSpot, that's HubSpot. And so that you've constantly thinking that big orange thing, that's HubSpot, you know what I mean? It's like passing a, the, the golden arches and what does that remind you of? You know what I mean? Mm. Heaven. Oh yes, true. <laughs> yes. Well, that's, that's a little uh, <laughs> that's a little morbid. Kind yeah. of. <laughs> but you know, it's true. Here's, here's another one to think about because people are coming out of you know, obviously the pandemic stuff, right? Mm. We lived so much in that digital world for yeah. the last three years or so. Yeah. Do people want too much more digital or do they mm. want to come back to events and meeting people and talking? So, mm. you know, they're, that's analog in a way. That's mm. the old school stuff. You know, run an event, make it fun. Mm. You know, and again, tie that in with your digital platform to get people to register and follow up and all that kind of stuff. But have that meaningful connection. I think that's that's what people need more of now. Yeah. I agree. I was talking to someone this morning, our special guest for next week's episode. And the mystery, mystery guest. Mystery guest. <laughs> and she was like, so I met her at Inbound and it was exactly that discussion. We were like, oh, it was so nice to like do that. And it was actually weird to talk to her on Zoom because, <laughs> you know, we'd met in person. It was such a weird experience. Yeah. It's like, I, I've seen you in person. Like now I find it weird that I'm seeing the digital you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you, you, it's not just the top half now you're seeing because you can imagine the full size yeah. version, the human version of yeah, the digital yeah. piece. But I think there's so much uh, to be learned about that because I think, yeah, definitely we need to rethink strategies mm. around our marketing and not just think digital. And I think the other the other issue people do is they think, Digital, not just because it's cheaper generally, but mm. also because I can measure it. I can look at the stats. And mm. I, I think people can go down that too much because, mm. you know, we love data. We, we use it all the time and we review mm. it and everything. And But you can still measure the offline stuff. You can still measure how many books got looked at. There could be a mm-hmm. call to action in, in, you know, when I was saying before about posting something out, there can be a call to action in that. Mm. So you can still track things, yeah. you know, but I just think you, you need to think outside the digital realm just because it's easy and it's cheap. Yeah, and you can also just ask people how they found you or, you know, that kind of thing so that you can track those interactions too. I do it yeah. all the time on calls. Like, oh, how did you um, find yeah. us, by the way? Like a sort of an introductory thing. It's a subliminal way of asking and tracking where that, you yeah. know, lead came from. So look, I totally agree. There should be more emphasis on finding other ways to create mm-hmm. meaningful touch points. So I'm glad that you agree because I've, I've come up with the 
concept that you're going to wear a sandwich board. Mm. You know that you know you walk down the street, <laughs> ask me about HubSpot, ask me about Inbound, <laughs> and you're just going to walk up and down the main street, George Street in Sydney, and mm. uh, and would do the same in Parramatta, and and that's old school marketing, okay, on the streets. As long as I'm being paid. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll be paid by how many leads you get. <laughs> or if you get arrested or not. <laughs> true, true. And then the legalities of that, we'll have to research a bit further. But uh, hey, this is an interesting topic. And mm. look, if this sparked your interest, whoever you Let us know what you think. Yes, exactly. Let us know what you think. If you want us to talk more to this, we'll do a few more of these unplugged, where it's just like off-the-wall yeah. topics that we've thought of. And if there's any that you think we should speak to, let us know. Yeah, but tell us what you think. Has the value of digital gone? Mm. You know, is there, it, are we really st- seeing... Maybe you've seen more value in digital than we have. Mm. You know, share, share some of those examples. It'd be good to kind of explore this further. Yeah, and if you like this show, feel free to subscribe and uh, follow us across our social channels and we'll see you in the next episode. But they can't subscribe because it's unplugged. Ah, uh, I see. Hang well, on, hang on. Let me just plug it back in. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Now you can do it. Now you can do it. Just hold it in there, Tony. Oh, the lights have come on. Oh, <laughs> That's nice. Oh, gosh. That's, that's what you look that's like. That's what you look like. Oh, my goodness. I'm getting another whiskey. This is awful. Oh, gosh. Well, I finished my cigar. I'm going to go light up another one. Uh, we'll see you next episode. Yeah.